So let's talk about how do you graph linear equations using a table. So highly recommend for this video that you get the guided notes at divideandconquermath.com. They're totally free and you can, you can just download them. So here's, here's the idea. In another video, I talked about how to create a table for ordered pairs. And I also talked about how to plot those points. So basically this is just an extension of this. So the types of exercises we're gonna look at will be like this, where you're given an equation, a table, and then you have to plot those points. So let's just get rid of the graph for a second so that we can focus on the table. So we wanna come up with three ordered pairs and we're given either the X or the Y coordinate just so that we can fill in the table. So starting with this first one, I'm going to plug the two in for the X. So I get Y, y equals 2 times 2 minus 1. And from here, I just really sort out the details. So this would be 4 minus 1, so this would equal 3. So I'd put a 3 right there in that table. Okay, so now let's do this again for negative 2. So I'm now going to replace that x with the negative 2 like this. And then once again, you just kind of see what happens. So this becomes negative 4 minus 1, so this will equal negative 5. And then I can just plug the negative five in here. Okay, so let me just clear off a little bit of space here and then we can do the last value. So notice with the last value, it's a y value. So now we're gonna plug in zero for the y. So this is gonna give us, let's see, zero equals two x minus one. So in this case, I now have to solve for the x. So I'll start by adding one to each side. So I get one equals two x, divide both sides by two and I get that x equals one half. Okay, so now let's bring back that graph. All right, so I'm gonna start by plotting this point two, three on the graph. And if you need a refresher of how to actually plot points, you can check out my video where I, I refresh that or where I review that. I'll drop a link to it in the description of this video. Okay, so I need to go to two on the x-axis. So this is the x-axis here. Here's the origin, zero, zero, I count to one, two, and then from here, I'm gonna count up to three for the y. One, two, three. So there is my first point, and I guess I should choose a different color besides white. <laughs> okay, all right, so there's the first one. So now let's move on to the next one, negative two, five. So now I start once again at the origin, and then I'll count one, two in the x direction, and then down one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so I'll just go ahead and mark that. There's my second point. And now for the third one. So this one might seem a little bit awkward, one half and zero. So just think about this though. So I need to go one half in the x direction. So this is where one is, this is where zero is. So you're just gonna have to approximate it, but that's, that's okay. So here's where one half is, somewhere in between, and then it's just at zero. So I'm really just gonna mark right here. And you can see, and actually if you, if you have a straight edge and you're graphing this at home, you might uh, really wanna think about taking a straight edge to do this. So I, this is always like a, a, a nerve wracking moment for me to try to connect these points in a straight line. But okay, not, not the worst, right? I did okay with that. Um, so right, so those three line, those three points, sorry, those three points should connect to form a line if you've done it correctly. Now, just as an aside here, let's say that I had this point and this point, and then what if I had a third point over here? So just something to keep in mind, like why, why do we choose three points? It's actually a little bit of a built-in check because if you have three points that do not line up in a line, then it tells you that you made a calculation error somewhere and then you can go back and find it. Okay. So why don't you pause the video here and give this one a try and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so let's start by plugging in negative three into this equation here for x. So I'm gonna have negative two times negative three plus six y equals 12. So negative two times negative three is six. So I've got six plus six y equals 12. Then I can subtract off the six to get six y equals six, divide both sides by six and I get y equals one. So that will be the first thing that goes into my table. Okay, so let me clear some space. And now let's move on to the next entry. So y equals zero. So now I'm gonna leave the x alone and I'm gonna plug in zero for y like this. 
So I get negative 2x equals 12, and then I can divide both sides by negative 2 to get x equals negative 6. And so that'll be what goes into my next entry. So I'll clear some space one more time. And for this last one, I want to put in x equals 3. So now this will be negative 2 times 3 plus 6y equals 12. So this becomes negative 6 plus 6y equals 12. I'll add 6 to each side to get 6y equals 18. Divide both sides by 6 and I get y equals 3. Okay, so now let me clear this out. Okay, and I've got my, let's see, I've got my graph back. So we can start plotting some points. So let's see, starting with negative 3, 1. So let's see, I'll count back negative 1. Let's see, I'll go here. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and then up 1. So here's my first point. Then I've got negative 6, 0. So I just 0, and then I go um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I don't go up any for the y's and then I go one two three and up one two three so there's my last point and so now once again I can connect these three points they all line up so we're good to go so we've got our line and okay so now so now we have to create our our own choice of three points so sometimes you'll get exercises that want you to fill in a table. Other times you'll just be told to make up three points. So I just want to kind of walk you through what do you do for that. So personally, I, I say if you have your choice of three points, like choose the easiest ones to calculate. And the easiest ones to calculate can really depend on the problem. So part of it is just getting some experience. But looking at this problem here, if I plug in zero for x, that is going to make this a really simple problem. So let's actually, let, let's just go to a, a plain table here for a second. So like I said, I'm going to plug in zero for X. So if I plug in zero for X, so just look at this. So all of this drops out. I'm just left with Y equals two. So if you have your choice of points, go that way. If you wanted to, you could also do zero for Y. So let's just play around with that for a second. So if I have zero equals negative three X plus two. So you may or may not feel that this is actually easier. Um, so if I go through and I solve for this, so I get negative two equals three X, divide both sides by three and I get X equals negative two thirds. So keep in mind that means that you have to actually graph that point. So if you don't like the point that you found, you can always just choose like four points instead, something to make it just easier to graph. That's totally fine. So in looking at this, I don't think that choosing something for Y makes this as easy. I think actually if I choose something for X, then that will just spit out what my Y is. So choosing just something random for X, choose small numbers. You don't wanna go choosing like 22, because remember you have to graph this. So if I just plug in one for this, I'm gonna get, let's see, this becomes negative three plus two, so this equals negative one. So I have one negative one, and then like I said, I don't I don't like this point. <laughs> I just don't wanna graph negative two thirds, so I'm gonna make a fourth point just for fun. So uh, another easy point to calculate would be if I plug in negative one. So if I plug in negative one, I get y equals negative three times negative one plus two. So if I sort that out, I get y equals three plus two, and that equals five. And so now I've got the points that I want, and I'm going to use this point, this point, and this point. So this is something, I guess, that's kind of nice about having some, some freedom with choosing your own points. Okay, so I've cleared all of this out. So let me bring back my graph. Okay, so let's start by graphing 0, 2. So I go to 0 on the x-axis and up 2 on the y-axis. So I'll mark the first point here. And then, like I said, I'm going to graph 1, negative 1. So I'm skipping over this one. Um, so 1, negative 1. So here's 1. Here's negative 1. So go ahead and mark that. And then this last one, negative 1. So here's negative 1. And then I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So marking that. Okay. And so now, once again, moment of truth. Can I connect them? And it's good. Okay, cool. 
So now let's take a look at just a couple of other examples. So I want to talk about what happens when you have like a, a fraction in one of these, because that, that's pretty common actually. So again, zero is, is probably like one of the, the best choices you can make. So uh, once again, let me get rid of the graph. And so let's start with just zero. So I'm going to use zero for x. So if I plug that in, so I've got y equals negative one half times zero plus three. So once again, so this is just going to fall out. So then I'm just left with y equals three. So that's nice. Okay. Now, what about other choices? So I just kind of want to point out what happens if I choose something like one. So I want to think about this for a second. So if I choose something like one, so I've got y equals negative one half times one plus three. So what's going to end up happening is I have to do negative one half plus three. So, you know, you could call that, so it kind of depends on the, the form that you can put your answer in. You could call that 2.5, um, or if you have to leave it in a fractional form, you would make that 5 over 2. So it kind of just depends on like what, what form you'd, you'd put things in. But I don't like, I, I prefer to have whole numbers if I can. So I don't want to choose actually one in this case. So if I think a little bit more about this, I have to multiply whatever x I choose against one half, which means that this is effectively getting divided by two, right? Like multiplying by one half is equivalent to dividing by two. So instead, why don't I choose even numbers so that the fraction will actually drop out? So if I choose something like two, so I get negative one half times two plus three. So now I've got negative one half times two. So if I multiply those together, that just comes out to negative one. So this comes out to negative one plus three. So this will just equal two. Okay. So that to me seems way better. So now what I want to do is I want to just choose another number and it could be positive. It could be negative. Let's, let's just keep it all positive this time. So I'll choose four. So if I take y equals negative one half times four, plus three, this will come out to, so negative one half, so half of four is two, so this is negative two plus three, so this will equal one. So there are my points again, and then, so just like I did last time, I actually just want to graph these three, just because they're like nicer points to work with. So you can only do this, by the way, if you're allowed to choose your own points. Like sometimes you're just going to have to deal with the fact that you have, you have a fractional point. But this time I have the freedom, so I'm, I'm going to do this. So let me bring back the graph. And now we can get this party started. So I'm going to start here with 0, 3. So 0 on the x-axis and then up 1, 2, 3 on the y-axis. So graphing that point. And then 2, 2. So here's 1, 2. And then up 1, 2. And then 4. 1, 2. Let's see. 1, two, three, four, and then up one. So there's the last one. Okay, so those three points definitely form a line so I can connect them. So there's my line in this case. Okay, so I have just one more here. So slightly different forms. So the last two I showed you had y equals. Now in this case, this is three x minus five y equals 15. So I wanna just talk about like, what's a better way to kind of work with this one. So this is a case now when you think about it, if you plug in zero for X, so first let's just see what happens. So if I plug in zero for X, like I've been doing for all of these other problems, so this will drop out. So I'm just left with negative five Y equals 15. And then I can divide both sides by negative five to get Y equals negative three. Okay, so there's the first point. Now here's the thing, in this particular problem, because how, of how this is laid out, it actually would be pretty simple for me to put in zero for y in this case. So if I do that, this is actually gonna create less work for me. So once again, I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff and then we'll just start over. So I've got now three x minus five, it's a terrible looking five, five times zero equals 15. So, um, so once again, so now this guy right here, this is just going to drop out. So I'm just left with the three X, right? So I'm left with three X equals 15 and then divide both sides by three to get X equals five. 
So sometimes it works out that it's easy enough to solve for the other letter when you plug in zero, and then sometimes it doesn't. So, I mean, part of it's just kind of playing around. Now, what would be the best choice of a third point in this case? Well, I don't know that there's like necessarily anything that really sticks out. I can't see like an obvious choice of like an X or a Y that would make my calculation simple. So sometimes when you're doing this, you know, you can actually sit and just play around and see if you can find something that will give you a nice whole number. But sometimes you might just have to just choose something at random. So let's say that I do, I don't know, how about Y equals two? So I get three X minus five times two equals 15. So I'm just gonna go through and solve for this. So I get three X minus 10 equals 15. I'll add the 10 to both sides. I get three X equals 25 and then divide both sides by three. So that's not great, but like I said, it, sometimes when you're doing these, you, you might not see like, what's a better guess I can make. Like sometimes that will be obvious to you and sometimes it won't. So, so if you do get something like this and you don't feel like continuing to find other points, that's okay. So I can just keep this as 25 over three. Although I might wanna note that this is equal to 8.33. Okay, so let's bring back the graph. And so I just wanna notice one other thing here. So, and these are just things that can go, go awry, I guess you could say, when you're working through this. So notice that the y-axis goes up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it doesn't go up to 8.33. So every once in a while when you're working through these, you might actually wanna adjust your axes. So I now wanna think of each tick mark as two. So we're gonna go in twos. So that's totally fine if you wanna do that. So if I do that, so I've got zero, negative three. So here's zero, I go down, so here's two. This in the middle would be my negative three. So if you ever feel like changing the scale, you can do that. Or again, this comes down to, if you realize, oh, I'd have to change the scale and I wanna choose a third point, that's okay. I'm just gonna press ahead with me changing the scale for now, just so you can kind of see what that looks like. So for this next one, five, zero. So here's two, four. So in between, this would be the five right there. And then 8.33 comma two. So two, four, six, eight, and then just a little bit after eight. And then I'm gonna come up here for two. So let's see. Eight, so two, four, six, eight. So a little bit after that, and then up to this two. So you can see that that still makes a line, even though I changed the scale, everything lined up just fine. So I'll connect all that. That is probably the worst line I've drawn out of the three, but you get the idea. So that's, that's kind of the idea now behind graphing lines using a table. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. I'll catch you next time.